Praise Lord Savior. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have come here about two Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. The Daniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw the Daniel coming towards him, he said unto him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. The Daniel asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. The Daniel replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than this. And he said to me, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ. like 
like Jesus. This is what followers of Jesus do. But that leads to another very important question. If we have all been called by Jesus to follow him, then the natural question to ask is why? Why should we follow him? And that too is a question that we can wrestle with by studying the Paul stories of the disciples. So let's look at two of these stories, starting with Philip. Today's Gospel reading tells us that Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Jesus found Philip. That's how it began for him. And in a way, for us, we are here. You might say, because Jesus found us. Just like he found Philip and invited us to follow him. We are not here simply because we decided to be. Not really. We are here because of Jesus. In fact, we are Christians for that same reason. Because Jesus found us and invited us to follow him. It's good to remember this, that we have been called by Jesus and gathered together for a purpose just as those first disciples were. Jesus had a plan. He knew what he was doing. And so he went and found Philip, along with the other disciples, and began the community that would become the church. Jesus went and found ordinary people, just like you and me and began his new community. And the only thing those first followers had in common was that Jesus found them. He chose them. And they accepted his invitation just like us. Jesus chose us and we accept his invitation. And just like those first disciples, we slowly learn what that means. Philip didn't know the first day what he was getting into, and neither did we. Surely, but slowly, but surely, over a lifetime of discipleship, we learned why Jesus chose us, why he brought us together, and what his plan is for us. This takes patience, persistence, and prayer. And it takes faith, just like those first disciples. We have to trust Jesus and let him guide us so that we can see more and more of his purpose for all of us. This is what we can learn from Philip's Paul story. It answers the question of why we are Christian, because Jesus found us and invited us to follow him. But it doesn't really answer the question of why we should follow Jesus. We get that answer to the question from Nathaniel's Paul story. Nathaniel had a different story, origin, origin story, for how he become, became a disciple of Jesus, right after Jesus found Philip, and he accepted the call Follow Jesus. Philip went and found Nathaniel. Notice, by the way, how Philip is already becoming like Jesus by doing what Jesus did. Jesus found Philip. Philip found Nathaniel. When he did this, Philip told Nathaniel that he had found the one about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathaniel protests with his famous response, can anything but come out of Nazareth? Philip is convinced right away that Jesus is the Messiah, the one promised to the people of Israel 
That is the reason enough to follow Jesus in Philip's land. Nathaniel, on the other hand, is more skeptical. Nazareth can be the home of the promised Messiah. It is a kind of out of the way place, not close to any economic center, nor on any major trade route. Not at all a place at all. Really, will the Messiah of Israel come from a more important place like Jerusalem? That's what Nathaniel was thinking. So how does Philip respond to this? He does not try to defend Nazareth or Jesus or claim or his claim that Jesus is the one. Instead, he simply said to Nathaniel, come and see. Come and see what? He doesn't say anything more than that. Maybe because Philip doesn't yet know what they will see. But he trusts in Jesus. So he invites Nathaniel to trust him too. Nathaniel accepts the call from Philip to follow Jesus. And when he does, he begins his own relationship with Jesus. And he receives an amazing promise from Jesus that Nathaniel will see heaven open and see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Why follow Jesus? Come and see. This is Nathaniel's call story. So how does it answer the question? Why should we follow Jesus? The answer is tied up in the simple invitation from Philip to Nathaniel, come and see. Why should we follow Jesus? Come and see. What does that mean for us today? Well, there is one way to think about it. Let me offer a specific suggestion today. Something you can do in your life throughout this year. And it's simply this, recommit to putting Jesus first in your life throughout this year. Follow Jesus every moment of every day of this year. Live for him. Learn from him. Look for opportunities every day to serve him. Take up your cross when necessary. Put his will ahead of your own, but follow Jesus every day, in every way. And then, notice what happens. As the year unwinds, ask yourself these simple questions. Did my life have more meaning for me this year? Did I see Jesus walk in my life this year? Am I glad that I put Jesus first in my life this past year? Could I sense his presence in this world in my life? He promise, promises to be with us always. How did I see that promise kept? Come and see. That's the invitation. Come and see. And when you do, you will rediscover why to follow Jesus. That's not to say that I think you will have an easier year if you do this, or that you will make more money this year, or that you will avoid sickness this year. No. But I do think that you will be able to sense our Lord's presence in your life in a more real way if you do this. I do believe that your life will have more meaning this year. But the only way to find out is to put Jesus first above everything else. Putting Jesus first means, of course, that nothing else can come between before Jesus, not even our families. Although when we put Jesus first, it almost always means we spend more time with our families. 
We made our home places of love, sanctuaries from the world where compassion and forgiveness are all respond. Put in Jesus first can cause tension at times in our families. Jesus warns us about that. But more often, putting Jesus first is a great gift and a blessing to our families and to our friends and the world. Putting Jesus first also means that the church will have a prominent place in our life. Church is how Jesus intends for us to follow him. We can't faithfully follow Jesus without being active in the church. I can say that again. We can't faithfully follow Jesus without being active in the church, the community that he founded. That doesn't mean that you should join every church community and attend every church function. But putting Jesus first does mean remembering the Sabbath setting a day aside for worship and rest. It does mean looking for ways to learn more about Him in Sunday school, in Bible studies, and in our own devotional reading. And putting Jesus first means spending time praying and reflecting on what your unique gifts are and how those gifts can be used to serve the church. It means Given your time, your talent, and your treasure to the church and to those ministries dedicated to serving those in need in our community and the world. Putting Jesus first also means learning from Jesus how to serve others, following his example. It means striving for justice and peace in our world. But putting Jesus first is ultimately going to be something different for each of us. And only you and Jesus can figure out what it will mean for you. But I invite you to recommit to doing this. I invite you this year following Jesus in the way, in this way. At the end of the year, Ask yourself what difference it made, and where was Jesus at work in your life? And when you do that, you will get a better answer why you are here than I can possibly provide for you. You will know why you are here and why you follow Jesus as his disciple, and you will know this far more fully from what you have learned in a thousand sermons. And maybe you will even see heaven open and catch a glimpse of those angels of God descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. The only way to find out is to do so. And to do as Philip suggested to Natalia all those many, many years ago. Come, follow Jesus and see. See what wonderful things happen when you put Jesus first in your life. Let us do this faithfully to the glory of God.